Hi, and welcome back to my YouTube channel, Software Testing. My name is Daniel Knott, and I'm happy that you're here. In today's video, I'd like to talk about the following topic. The topic is why product managers should have a close relationship with software testers. And why is this so important? Well, let's take a look at it uh, as a staffing of an agile software development team. Usually we have, of course, we have a product manager, we have a couple of developers, depending on the product, it might be a backend developer included, it might be an API developer included, there might be mobile developers and frontend developers. At the same time, there is an agile coach in the team, we have interaction and um, des um, visual designers in the team, and last but not least, we also have software testers in the team. And especially software testers play, uh, plays a critical role in such a team. Um, because usually software testers are um, alone in the team, right? They are, depending on the team size, there's one. If there are bigger teams and um, de depending on the, on the company size, there might be even two software testers in a team. And this software tester has actually a critical role and also a diverse role because he or she needs to ca take care of all the testing aspects from uh, software testing to automated testing. Uh, he or she needs to adopt um, the, the quality thinking in the team to establish the whole, um, the whole team quality approach inside the team and to advocate and to be a coach for quality thinking. At the same time, the software testers usually have the user in mind. And all these kind of aspects that the users will do with your product is coming with a software tester into the product while he or she is performing the testing activities. And all this knowledge is, is really, really important, especially for product managers, because they can take um, advantage of the knowledge a software tester has, because usually software testers tend to be product experts in the team. They have lots of domain knowledge and other technical um, knowledge, if they're technical enough, of course, that could help and um, be a benefit for the product manager. And that's why I would like to talk, um, um, or I, that's why I recorded the video um, why product managers should have a close relationship with software testers. And also in my case, I, I mean, I had two roles, um, both roles in, 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 in my last careers. Um, I'm, I'm not only a software tester for more than 13 years, at the same time, I was also uh, working as a product manager and was responsible in developing a product together with my team. And it was quite a challenging role. But since I had the, the testing background and the, the relationship with my software tester and the team, I was really uh, in, in a good situation because I had lots of benefits from it. So let's take a look why this is so important. So first of all, uh, create a healthy environment. Why is this important? Um, if you have ever worked in an agile software development team, you, you know that working with people isn't easy, right? Depending on the, on the mindset of the people, depending on where the people are coming from, different nationalities, um, it can be, there can be problems inside a team, like from a, from a personal aspect, but also from a pro, um, professional aspect. So working with teams isn't easy, and that's why to, it's important to create a healthy environment altogether. So it's, uh, as I said, it's, it's also is, um, important to establish a trusting environment. So each and everybody trusts um, the other one in the team, because with that, uh, you, can, you can really um, ship great products to your customers if you have a trustworthy environment and you are keen to, to ask questions in case you have one or two. What else? Um, it's also highly recommended to learn more about your uh, colleagues, uh, in, including their habits, their hobbies. Maybe you can you can have like, I don't know, an, an after work uh, beer together and to share some private um, details um, f uh, one each other to, to actually get to know each other a bit better because this creates a healthy work environment because then you know in some cases why he or she reacts in, in uh, particular that way or if they're like, for example, personal issues that also might affect the, the work environment. Um, as I said, it's beneficial to have this, this closer relationship. As I just said, you, you get to know the people in the team and you maybe become friends, right? Um, that also brings me to my next topic. Uh, working with friends is more fun than working with enemies. So I bet you also had already the, the situation in your team where you had a coworker where he or she was not like, your kind of person you would like to to hang out in your spare time but uh, on the other side we are all professionals so we have to deal with this situation but i think it's better to have like a, a friendly working environment rather than a toxic working environment because this is not this is not beneficial for us 
and especially that's why I also recorded a video. It's important that, soft, uh, that product managers have a really good relation to software testers because as I initially said, um, software testers have lots of knowledge from a technical perspective and also from, from a product perspective that uh, a product manager can benefit from. So let's take a look at the next slide. Be sparing partners. That's something you should actually perform and you should actually uh, try for. So product managers and testers should work closely together, right? So in best case, they sit together and, and define the requirements because usually software testers, they tend to ask the tough questions, you know, uh, especially if there's like a, a new product feature coming around and uh, maybe a product manager hasn't thought about all the cases that might occur or error cases or empty states or all these kind of things. And that's why important software testers should have a really early look into new product ideas and features to actually bring uh, the, the valuable questions up front at the very beginning of the creation of the product requirements. Um, in best case, they write the, the user stories together. When I was a product manager, I was defining the, the user stories from my product per, uh, point of view. And uh, of course, we had a template in our ticket system where we already pre-filled the, uh, the user story, what's the description, what, what's behind this new feature and why this is important for us and also for our customers. And of course, we had a big section for acceptance criteria. And um, since I had the testing background, I was already defining lots of acceptance criteria. But at the same time, I was also um, pinging my, my software test and the team and asking him, hey, take a look at the acceptance criteria that I've defined and also please give some feedback on what I have added there um, before we go into refinement. Um, this is also sometimes a really important and helpful. Software tester should be included as early as possible in the discovery phase. Um, depending on the company, depending on the team size, this might be difficult. But on the other side, uh, there might be interaction designer or the um, visual designer that could also um, spare or be a sparing partner with the product manager in an early discovery phase to actually also have the user's perspective. But at the same time, it's also valuable to ask the software tester upfront what he or she thinks about maybe an early prototype, because this is also something you can test either with real customers or within your team, for example. Um, next topic is support quality thinking and what this is all about. Uh, let's take a look. Um, usually the product manager uh, in a team defines the work for the team, right? As I said, he or she creates a roadmap, product roadmap derived from the company strategy and based on the company strategy, uh, you know, or the product manager knows what, what to do and defines the work packages that, would sh that should be uh, shipped in the next uh, days, month or weeks. So that's why, where the work usually comes from. And in most cases, the team focusing always on delivering new features, right? So developers, they usually focus on, okay, what is next to be implemented? They implement it. Of course, they focus on the architecture, they focus on, on maintenance, they focus also on logging and monitoring uh, in the team to have like a holistic view also to the, from an engineering perspective. So that's also already one part of uh, quality thinking. And of course, software products also need um, architectural rework and maintenance effort. As I um, initially said in the, in the previous point, depending on how old the software is and how mature the software is, there's always legacy code and, and parts of the code that might uh, be a bit more smelly than others. Um, so they might need to have a rework uh, needed. They need to be like an, an architectural review that needs to be done in order to improve maybe the performance um, the overall stability of the product. And this is also that everything that counts into uh, the quality thinking mode um, of, of the product. And this is something the product manager should also enable. Um, yeah, the whole team, including software testers, must get, must get the time to improve this overall experience. That's what I meant with support the quality thinking in a project because um, sometimes teams tend to, to rush on, on, on features to just ship, ship, ship but they never look back or take a step back and take a look at the overall architecture. So what is there that needs to be improved? Uh, were there any, like maybe some comments in the, in the code that says, hey, needs rework or th similar like that. So this is always something that needs to be um, counted in when developing new products, the maintenance effort. And this is also what I meant with quality thinking. 
The technical work, including test automation, must always be priority during the planning of a product development. It's also something that I, that I have seen in the past that some product managers tend to always try to ship new features, but they would they 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 don't like to look back like, hey, what do we have already in the in the in the system? Is it running good? Is it running smoothly? Uh, do we have performance issues or any th technical issues that might uh, might occur? Right. And also test automation is usually something that gets um, low priority in, in a new uh, product development because um, there is not enough time, because the feature needs to get shipped, um, or it's maybe not mature enough to, to invest in automation. Nevertheless, automation is sometimes usually uh, one thing that gets stripped out from the, from the, um, from the um, product release. That's also the last point. What I already said is test automation is often scoped out of the product release due to time sensitivity. And this is a big mistake, right? Um, so the whole team should be enabled to have a quality thinking and product managers and testers should drive this quality thinking inside the team. So the tester can advocate the product manager to think about these topics and then also to enable the software developers in the team to improve older parts of the application or anything like that. So that's what, my, what I meant with software qu support quality thinking. What else do we have? Software testers are great product managers. Yes, that's true. I've been in this situation myself. I was working more than, uh, I think eight or nine years as a software tester in a company. And then I got asked, hey, do you want to become a product manager? And I was like, hmm, why? Why should I become a product manager? And um, looking back, uh, I think that software testers are really great product managers. And here are a few points that uh, lead to my, to my thinking. So product managers can benefit from software testers in the team. I already said this a couple of times. Testers are usually the final frontier before the customer. Yeah, it's usually software testers do some regression testing before submitting the code to production. In best case, um, the whole team gets some time to do some final regression testing on the on the new features and then ship all together the new product to the customer and to perform the final checks that are needed. Um, after the release, usually product uh, software testers usually check the cust for customer feedback. Uh, if you develop a mobile app, for example, you can take a look at the app stores, the app store reviews, the app store feedbacks. You can take a look at the logging or monitoring implemented inside the team to get some valuable insights and feedback that is also needed or helpful then for the whole team, for the developers to fix some bugs and also for the product manager to gain some insights how his or her product is being used by the customers. But I have seen lots of product managers that are already doing this kind of things, like looking into reviews and feedback. But on the other side, I also have seen the, the complete opposite that I was working with product managers that didn't even care about user feedback or um, online, online feedback or ratings. So this is also not good. But uh, I see the software tester here in, in a great position to bring this information to the team. Um, a software tester is not only the final frontier before going live, but as I said, it's also a perfect substitute for a product manager um, because of all this knowledge that he or she brings to the team. I think I said it in the beginning of the video that um, software testers usually have uh, the technical perspective towards the developers, but on the other side, they are product or the main experts and working closely with user feedback and also try to, to act and behave and, and use the product like an end user would do. So that's why it's uh, software testers, from my point of view, uh, are great product managers. And when I got the opportunity to switch to product management, it was quite helpful for me because I already knew the product really well. I knew who um, are, were our customers and where also the bottlenecks or the problems in our application are. So I could easily prioritize those topics into the backlog and then also were in charge of improving the things. And to be honest, it worked out quite well. And not only the team was happy that we finally took over some technical topics, but also the customers because we overall, um, overall improved the, the experience of, of the product that I was responsible for. Um, yeah, I already said it. Software testers are the main experts. Um, they know every feature in detail. And, and this exactly what I just initially said, I've just forgot to open the bullets now, is that product manager, uh, that software testers are really great to substitute for, for PMs, for product managers. And maybe if you are in a situation in your company, uh, for example, your product manager goes on a longer vacation or on parental leave, for example, 
why not stepping up? Say, hey, I'm I'm the expert of the of the product. I can be a product manager for for a certain number of, of certain period of time, and then you can try it out if you think this is this is a valuable uh, new challenge for you, and it might be also next step to 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 grow and to to get a new career step. Um, on the other side, during such times when the software tester is the substitute for the product manager, he or she, the tester, cannot do the testing activities anymore. To some extent, he or she can while defining product and um, requirements and such things, but he or she cannot do like test automation, do the normal testing activities. Here is the complete team in charge. But in best case, if the software tester has done a great job, they, he or she already planted the seed of the uh, whole team quality uh, mindset and approach in the team so that software test, uh, that, so that um, software developers easy take over from the tester and there is no gap that needs to be filled. Okay, let's summarize today's video. First one, um, set up a healthy and trusting work environment helps you to establish a really nice working relationship. It's helpful to, to better understand your, your colleagues and to know them better. And this is a, is a nice and a nice work environment where at least I would like to work in my teams. Um, of course, this is also nothing new if you are in the software testing industry, but if you're a product manager looking the video, involve your software tester as early as possible in the discovery phase because he or she brings really valuable insights to your team or to your product. The third point, work as bearings partners on product feature definitions. Write the acceptance criteria together do the whole product requirement and maybe also the product um, backlog prioritization together to always have the quality thinking in mind and to bring this to your team. And I bet it will be beneficial also for your product quality and for your happiness of your customers. And last but not least, um, software testers are perfect substitutes for product managers if they're away for a certain um, period of time or it, it's also a great uh, next career step. So if you're a software tester, you're stuck in the software testing activities or you would like to, to learn more, to explore new things, why not go becoming a product manager? If you're interested about uh, my experience on that, leave me a comment. I'm happy to share my thoughts on that. And yeah, for that, I would say that that's the video for today. Thanks for, for tuning in. Um, I would like to, to say thank you for watching. If you liked the video, leave me a thumbs up and I would also be happy to see a subscription um, from you. Thank you and bye-bye.